Good afternoon and welcome to the second of our Look on the Bright Side new product launch event webinars. So great to have you back with us for the second week in a row as we kickstart week two of our webinar series that will take us all the way through September and our Look on the Bright Side launch event. As I talked about extensively last week, I'm not going to go through that in much detail today. Um, we are launching this event, we're creating an event here that is designed specifically for this season to support every retail customer that we have with new products, obviously, but also with much more tailored events, uh, support in terms of promotions, point of sale, displays and visual merchandising, support in terms of social media and content that can be used, but also support in terms of providing much more rich content around the brands and the products that we care so much about as a business. Uh, we know that right now we would all be at Autumn Fair and it's a great shame that we can't be there to meet in person with people. So we're using these events, especially the digital ones, as a touch point for you to find out a bit more from us that then leads you to dive in at a greater detail to find out more about the brands and the ranges that you're interested in and to engage with us on a one-to-one -one basis, either in person through our showroom event or our roadshow or through some more of our digital activities, both on the Widdup & Co website and generally throughout the range um, over this next few weeks. We're really excited today to have Rachel joining us as a special guest. Um, where I will talk a little bit more about our bright side range, which we're really excited to have added to the WIDAP portfolio over the summer. But first, I want to talk a little bit more about the things that are specific to card shops. This webinar is for card shop customers. We're doing four of these over the next few weeks for each key segment of our retail customer base to support them more with detailed information about what we're doing, what the trends are, what the market is doing that we all need to respond to as a result of COVID and to prepare in advance of the crazy busy Christmas season. So I'm gonna talk a little bit more about the ideal card shop, the things that are being changing um, over the last number of years that have accelerated as a result of COVID, but also the things that need to happen now to prepare both card shops and all types of retail actually for that matter with new theater with new experiential elements of retail that will drive the traffic back to the store and make sure that in a time where people have got trepidation and nervousness about going back into retail, that you provide the great reason for them to come and that we as a supplier of yours support you in every way we can in doing that. So the picture on the left is not picked by coincidence. This model of a card shop is exactly the key behind what I'm gonna talk a lot about in this first few minutes. So thank you for joining. Thank you to all of our card shop customers who take the time to support Widup as a business and the ranges that we have specifically for you. Today is all about you and we're thankful for your business and what you do to support us at this time. First and foremost, if any of you joined the webinars I did earlier in the summer with the Giftware Association, you'll have seen this chart extent like across all of my eight series that I did this is a really critical part of retailing now post COVID or say post COVID post lockdown really because COVID obviously hasn't gone away yet but as we prepare for a new normal this chart covers eight elements of strategy eight pieces of really important work to do in your business to prepare yourself for retailing in this climate I covered these in eight specific topics that you can go back and watch through the Giftware Association throughout the early parts of the summer. But there are bits of it I want to pull out today for retailing as a card shop that are very important. The eight pieces are becoming a responsible retailer. This covers everything from environment and sustainability to your ethical position as a company. Embracing social media as a means to communicate with new customers and existing ones, but particularly millennial and Gen Z customers who represent a growing part of the market. Getting online and becoming a multi-channel business so that your store is not the only place that people can deal with you, but it's a seamless part of all of the ways in which people can engage with your business and your products. The service, the experience and the theatre, getting set as I call it. Changing your retail bricks and mortar format to have much more experiential elements that drives traffic and people to come and view and visit what you're doing, but that also covers a product mix that makes the service experience and theater much more than just an item, but much more about storytelling. 
safe hygienic retailing is something you should all be quite comfortable with now everyone's having to do this in a way we never thought we would have to and now with the mandate to wear masks in store and the increasing elements that have been added in over the summer to make sure retailing is safe this is something that re remains a benchmark really to make sure that you get people to come back at all socializing for key events is increasingly important when we talk to rachel shortly i'll talk more about this because key events for us covers everything well coming up very soon right now we're in the back to school key events but soon we'll have halloween and christmas and then we hit spring where everything flows one into the other from valentine's to mother's day to father's day to thank you teacher to wedding season all of these key events are things that not only can you buy product for, but you can socialize your business with events online, events in store, um, things to draw people in as a crowd to come and buy product from you at those key times. Personal development and mental health is something very, very precious to me. I, I, I've dealt with mental health issues myself over the years, and I know that in a time such as this, we all need to take the time to learn, to grow, and to make sure that our mental health is our top priority. So spending time with the staff to train, educate and support them in these all new ways of doing retail to make sure that they are ready to deal with your customers too. And then finally, the most important one about today, product trends and commerciality, making sure that what you are selling fits what the market is currently needing. The market has changed completely as a result of COVID. Things that were trendy are no longer. Things that used to be trendy are trendy again. And things that we never expected to be a product or a category would go near, such as masks and hand sanitizer, have become giftable elements for everybody in retail. With that in mind, I use this saying a lot now. If you do what you've always done, as Henry Ford put it, you will no longer get what you've always got, but you will not survive. This climate is brutal and we all need to be prepared for change. With that in mind, WIDUP is changing too, to support you in all of these areas. And the past for us is no longer relevant. Things were different. Things were things we can look back on with great fondness, but we need to prepare ourselves for this mindset of experience, a, a mindset that epitomizes service, experience, and theater in your brand, in every part of the store and where people touch on your store. 50% of spend, by 2028 will be by millennial or younger customers all of these are expecting more from you and 50 percent of them whilst they still prefer bricks and mortar stores will only come out to them if there's something there to wow them 78 percent of them will spend money on an experience over a material item that they will no longer get value out of and 55% of them, despite the COVID climate, are spending more on events than ever. Any of you have been to a drive-in movie theatre over the summer and in the parks and stately homes around the country, selling £50 for a car to come and park and watch a film you've already seen before, only epitomises the desire for events. The rest are not absent either. Live experiences in consumer spending has increased by 70% in the world since 1987, which means even that the older generations, the baby boomers, are also clinging on to this trend and need for experience. And post-COVID, none of us have the money or time to devote what we need to, or the resources we need to, into doing this properly. So well-crafted brand experiences require very clever use of resources to connect your customers with your product in ways that have never been done before because right now we would have been at a trade show and in the absence of a trade show we have to do new things to get in front of you guys as much as you have to to get in front of your customers that concept can be summarized with this title retail attainment historically we had events such as range launches promotions discounts sampling clearance sales influencers and public events such as christmas mother's day back to school where we had product on one side and experiences in store on the other rarely did they come together like they need to now and the, the experiential retail elements of putting theater into your store that underpins both of these two columns is absolutely critical. So these three things form together this concept of retail attainment, where your store becomes a center of attention, a place where people come to gather and also to buy. And that is critical as we enter this Christmas season more than any other time of the year. So experiential retail and retail attainment is the non-product things, the services, the experiences, and the theater that will trigger emotive, emotional, inspiring responses from the consumers that you're trying to reach. This is accelerating trends that we already saw and spotted way before COVID. 
And that need for experience, experiential retail experiences is something that Selfridges, which is a store that has grown every single year for the last 12 years consecutively, despite being around for a long, long time, has already hit the nail on the head with many times over. They have a cinema now in their Selfridges store on Oxford Street. And this, whilst not being used at the moment, epitomizes the fact that people are looking for something new and different. When FAO Schwartz reopened its doors in New York, having been bought out of administration by a, a wholesale product company, the giant piano keyboard, the props, the things for the kids to play with are as much an important part as people visiting that store as the product is in there. So making change and accelerating what you're doing to create service, experience and theatre is what we want to help you with as we approach this autumn. Services are the things such as personalisation, gift box packaging, hampers, personal shopping, late shopping hours, collection services, drop off, drop shipping, all of these things you can add around the product. Experience is making it memorable and hospitable so that when people come into your store, they feel important. Offer them a coffee instead of a discount. Offer them comfortable furniture to sit in, loyalty cards and demonstrations, free lunch and food, brand depth for everything you're selling. And then finally, rip out your windows as often as you can and create a compelling, interesting display that starts from scratch so that every time someone walks by your store, they see something that they've never seen before. But before you do that, get the basics right. This model on the screen here is one I showed a lot over the summer. This is a store that I visited and I won't pull out where they are or who they are because they're not doing it this way on purpose. But this is the problem with retailing in card shops, especially right now. That display on the far left is what you're greeted to when you enter through the door that says book your National Express tickets here. And that display was for teacher, no signage, no compelling or interesting props. You can't even tell what the product is on there, let alone as you go through the other pictures here, where there are cardboard displays and footstools blocking your ability to actually even see the product that's there. The window underneath the Thornton sign, which by the way, they haven't sold Thorntons in this shop for many years. The window has product in it that is from our company from six years ago. There is nothing compelling that's driving people into this store. Most importantly, as I go into product shortly, the most important part that's missing is they're not telling stories. You should buy deep into the brands you do choose, not light and scattergun, making up your own bits and pieces, curating your own mix if you don't know what you need to be buying, but pick fewer stories and do them well and make them more interesting for the shopper as they come into your store. Innovation will be critical throughout all of this. You don't have to be outlandish or spend a fortune. You need to lean on companies like ours to help you make this happen. So where WIDUP can help you across all of these, ethical and sustainable retailing. WIDUP is a founding member of the Slave Free Alliance. We audit personally, myself, as well as our BSCI and SEDEX partners, 80% of the factories that we use. Our packaging is increasingly sustainable and incorporates less plastic. In terms of social media, we will provide you with video, gifts, mood shots, all the content you need to promote on your social media channel so you don't have to invent it yourself. We'll provide images, stock information via CSV feed or otherwise APIs um, to help you with your website and the stocking of our products on it and descriptions and content to help you create what you need on a site for be, being successful. We will help you with POS displays, props and visual merchandising kit to help you with your service experience and theater. We will help you with sealed boxes, CDUs, no MOQs so you don't have to buy lots of stock that sits on the shelf becoming unhygienic. We will help you with a lead on all the seasons from Christmas to Mother's Day. And we are launching Mother's Day for 2021 now. So you can be ahead and socialize your store with events around the key times of year. <clears throat> we will do webinars like this one, events like our showroom event, road shows to help you with personal development and prepare you for this new climate that we're in. And we'll support you with 4,000 new products per year, as we always do across our 24 brands to make sure you have what you need on the product for this period. So that brings us to this event, the Look on the Bright Side launch, designed for this season with 700 brand new products, 14 key launches across five interactive channels. 
From the digital content we launched through Widdop & Co Map last week to the digital events like this one that will run throughout September, the roadshow in the southwest and the southeast of the UK over the last two weeks of September and early October, and then the showroom event, which opened amazingly on Tuesday and we're so grateful and blessed for the support that we've had already this week in our showroom. It's been amazing to see you all in person and to talk about how we all work more importantly and collaboratively together to help beat this crisis. Underpinning all of that will be the product promotions and marketing toolkit that you need to help put these products live in your business. So, Widdop & Co Map is the underpinning element of that product and marketing toolkit. We launched Widdop & Co Map, which is our marketing asset portal last week. That map tool is there to give you everything you need across all of our products from catalogs, priced and unpriced, video content on each of our new brands, introductory presentations to train you and your staff about the right key and buzzwords to use when talking about them, social media content, posters and mood shots, visual merchandising guides. Everything you need to underpin these products in your store is on Widdop & Co Map. But for card shops specifically, we have other specific product and marketing tools and products especially that I want to cover. So now I wanna talk about the specific trends, brands, ranges and tools for Autumn Winter 20, specifically for our important card shop customers. So the trends firstly, we talked about this last week and all of these trends thankfully are relevant to card shops. So cards and social stationery sales have been booming as anti-technology solutions to social interaction grow. People are tired of Zoom and FaceTime and they want to send snail mail again. And there's so many amazing cards and content that you can buy now from um, other places that you've not really touched on before. I know one of our great partner companies, Hotchpotch and another one, Pigment, are both doing fantastic work on trend-led cards for this season. End of isolation humor, good and bad jokes about lockdown and life after lockdown that are part of Christmas decorations and every other ornament that you'd wanna buy right now. Rainbows on everything, I talked about this a lot last week, but it can't just be slapping a rainbow on a product, it has to have something underpinning it to really be cru crucial and successful. Gifts for the heroes, the nurses, the doctors, the teachers, the postmen, and the keepsakes for those that we lost in this crazy and awful time. A whole new product category for personal hygiene as a gift. And you could well say, why would a card shop sell hand sanitizers and masks? But why wouldn't you right now? You can make them fun and giftable and sit on the countertop right by the till point so that it's the last thing that they see before they make their buying decisions. Anti-technology gifts, board games have increased in sales by 200% throughout the COVID crisis. And that will continue into the autumn. And then the characters, the shows that have got people through during this crisis will be near and dear to their heart as they select products in the run up to Christmas. From Lady and the Tramp live action on Disney to Mulan, which is coming out this week, and even Tiger King, which everyone's seen now on Netflix. Home-based hobbies and interests from sewing and craft to baking and gardening are a critical part of our underpinning range that can, can last throughout all of next year as well. And so whilst it's a trend, it is something to hang on to as we go forward into spring 21 too. So there are two triangles to pick out that we need to map everything that you're doing in our store, in, this, in your store, sorry, as the same way we map everything we do in our range. Lots of customers say to me, why have you brought in this range when it competes with that range? All of our ranges are very carefully mapped out. We never try to bring in something that competes with something else, but it may exist in, in, as an alternative to that other thing for a different type of customer. So firstly, you should be mapping all of the, the customers that come into your business. You need to know who they are and know what they're looking for because straying from your core customers right now will give you too high a risk on product and everything else you're doing. So map your ranges and your brands that you buy against these four things are the halo products, the absolute aspirational items. Uh, rarely would we see these to be fair in card shops, but there are some that are very important as well at this time of year. Best, better and good. Everyone knows good, better and best, but you need to know where you're pitching and you shouldn't really be crossing over more than two of these blocks of this triangle. If you're trying to be good and halo, then you're trying too many things too hard. In addition to that, you need to map all of those same brands and products against the type of style that they are appealing to. Are they classic and timeless, which is the biggest at the bottom that will last for as long as we can all hope for? Or are they trendy at the top that will come and go just as quickly as they arrive in your business? And if you buy it for a second time, you'll be left with all the stock that wipes out your profit margin on the first purchase. 
trend, vintage, humor, modern, traditional, classic, timeless. You can apply these to everything that you do in your business, especially as a card shop, whether it's the greeting cards themselves or the product that accompanies them. And therefore, once you've worked those things out, you need to focus in your lane on what you should do to drive retail attainment and sales for your business. Cards, cards, cards. Of course, you're a card shop. This webinar is for card shops. But just because you're a card shop doesn't mean you need to focus on the stale old racking that you would use. You can link the cards with gift items that match and accompany it, which Brightside, which we're going to talk about in a second, is a fantastic range that's done that over the years. You can use the trend events, styles and words in the cards as well, as I've just talked about, from Tiger King to toilet paper shortages in the spring. These can all be applied to cards and make it humorous. Less racks, like I showed in the picture at the start. More sustainability. Take away the PP bags and envelopes. Maybe even create a section of your store where people make their own cards and have some fun in the store as part of an event and make yourself into an online specialist personalizer if you want to, but be aware that competing with the likes of Moonpig or Thoughtful is a very dangerous game to get into. Occasion gift. Get your seasonal rotational calendar together from the window displays to the product offering and find innovation from your suppliers, predominantly existing ones. Don't go out and creating loads of new supply base to make sure that you've got occasion gift for those key events and the social things you do around them at key times of year. Make sure you've got impulse purchases all over your countertop of where the till is so that accompanying price led items that are trendy in both format and style, such as hand sanitizers, can be bought at the same time as other things that people have come in for. Find functional items, items that they don't just come in and buy once in your store, but they'll keep coming back for if they like them. Home fragrance is a great example of that. And finally, dive deep into brand-led stories. Use brands like Brightside, like Disney, to draw traffic into your business as we promote those brands and make sure that the consumers are going to be asking for them when they come to see you. This is how we do it in our store. Across Baby, we map every single one of our Baby ranges against Halo, Best, Better and Good, Modern, Classic, Traditional, Cute and Shabby Chic. We map everything to make sure we're not competing with ourselves, but also to make sure we've got all of our bases covered. And that is a really critical part of what we do and what you need to do is you're making and preparing for your buying decisions at a time where you're not going to get to go and see them at a trade show. So this brings us to product. What are the four must-haves and the four maybe up to you choices that we could promote to you or propose to you at this time. We have 24 brands in our business. I'm only going to show you four because we never intend for any stockist of ours to buy everything in our range and buy dribs and drabs of all of it and create a mishmash story. What we want you to do is to choose the ones right for you and your customers. And the four must haves I'm going to talk about right now are the ones that we're launching this autumn that are the must haves for you as a card shop. Number one, Cheerful. Cheerful is our signature launch of the autumn. It's created in partnership with NHS Charities Together. It uses the bright rainbow colors and is focused on positive messages at a time when lockdowns ended. This quick video that I showed you last week and I'm gonna show again, is again, the epitome of the type of content you need to be using in your store to draw traffic for these new brands and ranges that you're sharing. This range created in-house at Widdop & Co is designed for a time when the lockdowns ended, families are getting to meet again, and we're actually getting the opportunity to celebrate the key events and the key people in our lives that we've not had so much of in the last six months. Gifts for Mother's Day and Father's Day 2021. From mugs and pickup items to photo frames, our biggest category as a business. The key thing in this range to talk about is that 7% of all of our sales will go to NHS charities together that Captain Tom himself was fundraising for. There are over 80 items in this range, all are under £10 retail for key pickup price points. And it includes as well personalizable gifts for the key workers from the postman to the paramedics. Um, that you can use for Christmas tree decorations in the window of your store. It'd be fantastic at this time of year. 
through to the new categories such as hand sanitizers and masks that we have at really great prices in a very different style to the commodity type ones you can buy from a chemist or a wholesaler or a supermarket. In addition, with all of our new ranges and brands, we're providing you everything from the paint and the signs to the shelves, to the rug, to the display stand, to the posters, to the catalogs, to the gifts, everything you need to promote this range and brand in your store at this time is provided by Widup, and the same applies across everything in our portfolio. So the next brand I want to talk about is where Rachel comes in. Brightside is a range that we have taken over from David Hicks and Really Good over the course of the summer of 2020. So excited to finally get the chance to meet Rachel as the author of my favorite children's books that I read to my two twin two-year-old boys. Um, and really excited to have her here today to talk a little bit about this range. Um, and so Rachel, I'll unmute you so you can talk a little bit. Um, hopefully I'll unmute you. you. Yes, there you are. Um, thank you so much for coming on and spending some time with me i know the first part of this is probably completely irrelevant to you but no, actually i was making notes so yeah um, <laughs> but i'm really really excited to have you here to talk about this for us because bright side for us is a really now key part of our range in fact we're picking up the last bits of stock from really good this week and um, so from next week we will have full control of all the giftware product that's left in this in the uk right now anyway for this brand so um, what I really wanted to ask firstly, because you know, some of this I've heard and some of it I haven't given the craziness of the summer, um, is if you could start by telling us a little bit about how it came about. Tell us about the Brightside brand and obviously you're called Rachel Bright, so there's a hint. <laughs> but, yeah. but give us some background. Well, I was blessed with a, with a great surname. Um, but you know, it's funny, I didn't put the two pieces together until I started the bright side and actually I started writing books at the same time so I did a master's in printmaking in Bristol and over the course of three years I kind of messed about in dusty print rooms with letterpress and um, etching and screen print and one of my favorite places to spend time was in the letterpress room and um, students being students there was no full alphabets and so I was just kind of playing about hand printing things that fell out of my head and I think the first thing I ever printed was you make my heart go boom and that was, and someone just wandered past as I was doing it and said, oh, that'd make a great Valentine's card. And I, that, that was really like a seed, you know, that I had, didn't know then what it would come, uh, go on to become. But um, I thought maybe that would make a good Valentine's card. So I, uh, to cut a long story short, you know, I went and looked at some cards. I, I sent that, that design and a couple of others off to um, David Hicks at the time. And he said, you need to do a few more than that. And so I did. <laughs> and then uh, eventually sort of took them on and it started with 14 cards, as some of you will know, if you were involved with the bright side in the really early days. And that just grew and grew organically. And it really was wonderful because we sort of created product um, basically when we were having the most amount of fun. So we'd kind of come up with ideas and things that made us chuckle and smile. And, you know, we go ahead and make that make that thing. So it was very driven by ideas and creativity. And of course, at the core of it all was the positivity because I, I, I jokingly call myself a professional optimist. I always have. And one day I was sitting there at my desk um, and I was looking at this professional optimist scribbled on one piece of paper and my name on another. And I was like, right bright side look on the bright side and you know some pit light bulb over my head <laughs> went off and so it just kind of all tied together and really the whole point of the bright side for me was to spread um, a way of uh, looking always finding a positive in every single situation and I think having that core core kind of ethos and raison d'etre behind it has been really the driving force behind why it's connected with so many people and you know that there's a real as you were saying there's a story right at the heart of it you know it's there to you know every single product card everything should make someone feel a little bit better for having seen it or being gifted it or sent it or whatever it might be so so yeah in a nutshell <laughs> that's uh, yeah. how the book said came about it's it's amazing because i think um, I always thought, as I said, I, I, when I first met you over over Zoom, we've never actually met in person yet. Um, yeah, we um, we talked about this range, and for me, I always thought that David had created it himself off the the, the Killers song, the famous Killers song. <laughs> um, and I had no idea of the link with you or or the background to it. And as I said, um, Rachel is the um, is the author of the of three of my favorite children's books as well now so 
um, quickly before I go into more on the bright side. Tell us a bit about that and how you now write children's books. Yeah, so uh, my other hat um, is as a children's book author and illustrator, actually. Um, and I, that started at just about the same time as I was beginning with David on the bright side. And um, I met, um, I was talent scouted, essentially, from an exhibition I had of some of my etching work from my master's by a, um, an editor at Puffin. And I, uh, she, I worked with her every few months and I did my first three books with Puffin and then I did Love Monster, which some of you might be more familiar with because that's now become a CBB show, which is really exciting as well. So um, that's those four Love Monster books. And then I went on to partner with some other illustrators, which um, you're talking about, Stephen. My book, The Lion Inside, um, is probably the most well-known with Jim Field. And I, basically I'm working on my sort of 27th book now, but that's what I do when, mm. I'm, not, when I'm not dreaming up bright side things <laughs> or being a parent or well. being a parent i have two little ones a two a two and a half and an almost six so uh yeah, yeah. and we homeschool too it was so that was a little bit less of a leap for us but so yeah it's busy it's fairly yeah, busy it sounds yeah. like it one <laughs> of the things that i always admired the most about this collection is the linkage between card and gift and i always say when i'm talking to card shops or generally in our industry and i'm talking about what we do um, people always say, why are you not, or why have you not looked at becoming a card publisher? And I've always hated the title card publisher, because to me, a card is just a gift as much as a mug is just a gift, but it's just a less expensive version of that, or a more easy to, to choose and, and send directly version through someone's mailbox. Um, what I always admired about this collection is that the card and gift always told the story seamlessly together. And as I've alluded to already today, I think that that is an increasingly important part of retailing going forward. So was that always intentional? What, what's the plan behind that? And do you see that as being something that's really critical going forward as well? Or, or is it... um, definitely. I mean, there's two, two sort of uh, points to that. The first one was, funnily enough, that um, when we first started doing the cards, um, David actually said to me, I'm not sure these will translate to gifts because normally we do characters and it gives a very character led kind of um, area. And so I think partly, again, that's why it was really kind of different to then take the words onto the product. But like I said, we did it, always did it. We'll, you know, I imagine the person on the other end of receiving this gift or buying the product and, you know, using it and whether it would bring a bit of joy to their life. And that really informed every single decision. So in answer to your question absolutely I, I agree with you you know a card is designed you, you know you buy a card to, to make someone feel wonderful at the other end when they open it up and you buy someone you know a tin with some and put some lovely things in it to make someone feel wonderful at the other end of it but the more you can kind of tailor that message to the to the to the recipient I think is the absolute key to it being a success I mean I always said I came up with some of my best ideas when I was um, thinking of a card for someone in particular you know I didn't just sit down and go oh let's brainstorm some Mother's Day ideas or whatever I think what what do I want to say to my mum what would my mum yeah. want to say to her mum you know I was thinking about actual people in my life and before I did the bright side I used to hand you know hand make all my cards and write those you know make pictures with those things so it's kind of the next logical step but the best ideas always came from the very soulful kind of part place you know and yeah. that is that's the story i think of gift and card full stop and the more you can put that into your whatever you make you know the more that person will receive that with the message intended and you know fall in love with it basically <laughs> I couldn't agree more so one of the things i've been asked a lot in the last week i know i haven't even talked to you about this yet is that is what's happening in the future everything that we're selling right now in brightside and that we've launched this summer is an existing item or a bestseller that already was out there. So what are our plans to work with you going forward? Um, and I'm excited about it. You know, we, we've talked about it a lot. It seems to have taken forever for us to get over the line with this launch. Um, but me and Rachel have been talking since the probably early days of March, I think, um, about the potential for this range going forward. And from my perspective, it's all about innovation and bringing the refresh that I suppose is, is probably needed now because it's been in, around as a, as a style for a, quite some time. Um, and so next year we plan, I know we've talked about this, we plan to bring out the refresh in the summer um, with some great new both formats and styling that tie together well. Uh, but do you have anything you want to share or talk about in terms of the future and what that could look like? Well, uh, yeah, I, I mean, exactly that in the sense that when we first started doing this, letterpress 
there just really wasn't anything like this. So it sat in a very simple way, the, uh, the black and color letterpress with the metallics on a white background. And that just kind of like that was, it stood on its own because there was nothing else around it that was even similar. And, you know, now sort of several years on, of course, there's lots of things like that. So we want to retain the print made feel and make it feel handmade because um, believe it or not, every single letter has been placed, you know, by either by hand or, um, you know, uh, by computer, but it, every decision is made. So it feels handmade. So that is definitely going to be still in the middle of it all, the print made feel, but we'd like to refresh it to, to a place where it just feels new so it's kind of you know you've got the classic right side of how it did look and it will still sit alongside that classic product so if you still had classic right side it will sit alongside it very comfortably but it will be a new offering so that it's something new for your customers when they come in and you know are looking for something they haven't ever seen before because perhaps you know everybody might already have a mantin or they bought one or whatever so the actual product as well as the look and feel will be just as important and we're going to hopefully together bring those two things together because with your expertise of knowing i mean i believe it or not i have a, i have an archive a huge archive of product i've always wanted to publish that just never happened for one reason or another um because it wasn't the right time or it wasn't something they wanted to do or you know whatever and i think there's some really exciting stuff in there and i'm sure we'll come up with some stuff together as well so <laughs> couldn't agree more <laughs> i mean i think it's exciting you know at a time like this people need to lean on the brands that have been successful but also know that there's something coming to sustain them in the future for a new type of customer that's looking for something a bit different and i think that's what we can do together in 2021 so um ice peels will be back here next spring talking about uh, some new items that are uh, old ones brought back as well as a bit of more innovation as we approach the time of launching a, a, a new refreshed look for the summer of 2021 uh, which seems like a futuristic date actually uh, thank you so much Rachel for joining us um, you are welcome to leave or stay on for a little bit longer I'm only going to be about another five more minutes but thank you so much we appreciate your time and um, excited to see see this range finally launched in the Widdop portfolio absolutely and a big thank you to all of you supporting it it's a real pleasure to be here thanks Stephen thank you bye bye so the bright side range that we're launching this this summer is as i said already mostly bringing back key bestseller items items that were already in the portfolio before that we can add to and continue to sustain as part of our widup service and offering with customers that potentially have never seen this before there are 89 lines launching in autumn winter this year most of them are in stock already and more on the way and um, so there's some of the great best sellers that you can lean on at this really tight financial climate uh, to make sure you've got some great items in the range whether it's things for teachers or new moms or even the mantin itself which is the most famous item in the portfolio um, our third new range I want to talk about is Mother's Day 2021 which is on the 14th of March next year slightly earlier uh, which means that there's less of a window to get ahead on this and that's why we are launching our Mother's Day 2021 range now there are 10 stories for Mother's Day 2021 all inside their own relevant brand and relevant to specific people for specific things whether you lovers of Disney or lovers of our new cheerful range we have something in there for everybody um, and therefore we don't design any retailer to buy it across all 10 of these individual ranges. The signature one, which we're obviously using as the cover of the catalog and the presentation here, is our peaches and cream range that you can see on the right. But there are great new items in country living from a mum's garden collection to the aromatherapy company that you can see there with these printed glass jar candles with a sleeve over the box. So once Mother's Day is over, if you want to carry on this range, you can just take the sleeve off as well. Uh, these have in them um, the range is called Bloom, but they have inside them actual floral dried petals. So they're a really nice scented, uh, beautiful gift item for the spring. We are to launch this range doing two key things. Firstly, there is a catalog of all the new product, the stuff that I've just talked about, really, the 10 things that you need to look at now with your salesperson to guarantee your quantities for next year's Mother's Day and place your order on those by September the 30th when we're locking off with our factory everything that we need to place to get it here in time. In addition to that, you can go through if you're looking later for more stock or you're looking for stuff that's not specifically new but that you know you can get in stock early, then you can buy from our existing stock lines. Items that are carrying on into 2021 from this year's Mother's Day range, there are also great sellers, but they're focused on guaranteed early stock and delivery with exclusives available if you so wanted them to be. 
The next key range to match our cheerful one is Oh Happy Day. We soft launched this in the spring. It is essentially the Oh Happy Day product uh, is our cheerful range for birthday. And I talked about this when we talk about um, being millennial and Gen Z focused. This range is aimed at a younger target market for purchasing, but obviously as old as anyone feels in terms of being a recipient of one of these gifts. We sell the giant glasses in here, the wine glass and the beer glass and um, the Prosecco glass, which hold an entire bottle of wine in those. Uh, so really great gift items at great price points. These are commercial items designed with brighter colors, brighter packaging to uplift the mood, but you'll see that they're based on our best-selling formats and there are over 70 SKUs under £9 retail with a few that are over that. Really exciting, great range to sit alongside Cheerful for all of our card shop customers. And there may in fact be cards coming in both of these in 2021. The four considerations. Uh, so these are ranges that we already had that you should definitely be considering if you're not already stocking at this time. The four that I've just covered are all brand new. The four that I'm talking about now are ones for you that are already in stock. The first is impressions. Widup sells 2 million pieces of photo frames per year. Photo frames are a great category, which I talked about earlier, that drives function that's not commoditized. You can put your own face papers in these, so it looks like you've got your own exclusive range in store. You can put prints inside them. You can sell them alongside something else so that you can print the, maybe the photo for them in store on your own printer, so that actually you're giving a solution to the consumer as well as the photo frame. We have good, better, and best in this, all inside impressions, which is our iframe range, our impressions range, and our elegance range. So these are a great functional gift item that also can have repeat purchases and some of that service experience in theater if you're printing or adding to the product in store. The second is Bambino, our most famous brand now as a business and the go-to destination for baby. Everything for baby, from the first scan to the baby shower to the nursery accessories and the keepsakes. We cover everything from age zero to three, from baby toys to the play mats, the rocking chairs, and even the rocking horses that you can see there for sitting on. We cover all price points too. There are items in this range that retail for a pound and there are items in this range that retail for 200 pounds. Everything in here is designed for specific types of people. And as with all of our brands, we cover good, better and best inside the brand so that you don't have to dip around others in our range. You can just choose the one brand and then buy the right elements to cover your two blocks of that triangle we talked about earlier. The third is Disney. Disney is quite simply the biggest brand in the world. I've talked about this on every webinar I've ever done. Disney right now is going through a massive renaissance that started when Frozen came about, but actually as all the live action movies are coming about and now as Disney Plus is taking hold of the home, home viewing of Disney storytelling, uh, especially for younger kids with Disney's Mickey Mouse Clubhouse and the equivalent, there's some incredible stories in here with some incredible product to match. And we cover everything from the classic timeless collectible items to, uh, at a halo price point to the really beautiful baby and Christmas gifts that you could give as a one-off thing for one Christmas only. And finally, Amore. In the same way Bambino is the go-to baby brand, Amore is the go-to wedding brand. If you don't stock Amore and Bambino, then they are absolutely the must-haves across our normal portfolio for all of our card shop customers. And we have cards in both of them for you to buy. It's our go-to brand for romantic products. It can cover stuff for Valentine's without being so red and extravagantly Valentine's. And it can still cover stuff from first anniversary to 60th anniversary. Amore covers every base and point for weddings and associated events at affordable prices with a beautiful styling and finishing that's very unique to the Amore brand. So that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining us on, on to all of our card shops for keeping coming back. As we approach spring, 20, spring summer 2021, there will be so much more great new products in the spring to work with you. But if you want to join us one-to-one -to, -one to see some of this product firsthand, please come and visit widup.co.uk forward slash brightside show and register for either our showroom event, our roadshow event, or some more of our digital events. Be sure to visit Widup & Co map for all the content that you need. But thank you so much for taking this time on a busy, busy Thursday afternoon to come and join us. I hope you enjoyed it and I look forward to seeing you on future digital events over the rest of 2020 and into 2021. Thanks so much.